Do you like this minus the opinion? And um, I think whoever takes the, the breaks on the day, like you never know, a bounce of ball in these conditions, you know, a fluke or something or a goal or something, you know, extraordinary. It takes always one instant in the game to, 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 to win. And thank God we got it the last day. But hopefully, like, you know, we'll see a good game of football. And um, after, that's enough being from Castellon Vera. I'm hoping that there will be on the, look, on, the, on the winning side today. Right, and uh, we have about uh, 20 minutes to go to uh, throw in time here. And I know that the Douglas has a huge crowd of following from Douglas again. They to get six bucks loads this morning. And I know that there will be a big crowd from uh, Castellon Bear. So they will have it for the moment. Uh, we have the, as Donald, just you want to come into me there a second? Yeah, I'd just like to um, to say on behalf of the, the Castellon Bear and Bear Club, we extend our best wishes to Brendan Larkin, who um, can't be here today. And um, I know Brendan for a long time, like, and um, you know, I send him our best wishes today, regardless of what happens here. And I, I presume, Sean, you'd echo those. A very good point. Uh, I'd like to thank the Donald there for his, um, for his wishes for Brendan. We mentioned the very same. We'll be on the phone first thing to him. The minute to the final whistle blow, and we'll be on the phone to him. So they will have it, and uh, we hope that everybody will enjoy what should be a great game of football. <laughs> As for Douglas, they had a chance at the end of the game to kick the ball wide down the far side of the field, but the attack broke down, ball came out the field, and Alan O'Regan scored a superb point to equalise the game. Um, I think it, it needed a point of that calibre to, to draw the game for Castle Town Bear. Ronan McCarthy really was the uh, person in chief for uh, Douglas, but I was saying to them during the week that maybe they're relying too much on Ronan McCarthy. Well, I think when you have a player like Ronan McCarthy, I've watched it all the year, and um, against the likes of Valley Rovers and in the semi-final against St. Michael's, he's so dominating uh, around the middle of the field. Um, you, ha you know, you can't put the pin on him, the fact that he's a very, very good player. I think that they're more than a one-man team. I think the last day, um, the central halfback, uh, Barry Deasy, had a superb game on um, Seamus Spencer, which was vital to the outcome. I think Seamus Spencer was, was in, for the first ten minutes, created a small bit of trouble, but after that, Barry Deasy was outstanding. And I think all the Douglas backs played very, very well. Uh, to concede 1-6 is definitely not a big score, you know. Um, OK, but the other side of the field, they seem to have problems. They had plenty of ball, but they only scored um, nine points. So I think they'll be hoping to improve on that today. And I think from the Castellan Bear point of view, they'll probably have been working hard on um, how they're going to contain Ronald McCarthy. It wouldn't surprise me if you saw a change around the middle of the field from Castellan Bear today. Now, the big problem that Castellan Bear has going into the game, there's no Padraig Crowley, their goalkeeper. He went off injured in the county senior final. The king, as we described in the last day, Daniel Healy, he's also out, so they've had to bring in a new goalkeeper and also a new forward. And we hear that uh, Adam O'Regan has also picked up an injury. Uh, yes, I think um, their goalkeeper is a very good goalkeeper. As we saw, um, Tua Ocas probably in the county senior final. He's a good goalkeeper. He's going to be a big last to Bear. I see they brought back David O'Driscoll, and I remember him from the, the olden days. Maybe I'd even be back nine or ten years ago. But he's a very, very good player. So it'll depend what kind of shape he's in now. Um, there's no doubt that Daniel Healy from the forward line, a, a, a great minor in his day, a very good player, uh, has always played very well for Castellone Bear and actually Bear down through the years. He's going to be a big last. So it's interesting to see um, how Noel Murphy will play in the corner forward spot in his place. Would you like to call it? Well, I think a lot of people are saying that Castellon Bear will win this game. I think a lot will depend on how serious Elna O'Regan's injury. I think if Elna O'Regan has any type of injury, I, I actually would fancy Douglas to win. Okay, that's the thoughts of Jim Nolan. Johnny Keane, how are you? Mm -hmm. uh, here for what should be a thriller. Come back to us around 20 minutes to three and we'll tell you the story of what promises to be a very, very exciting game, the intermediate football final between... Hey, the real, the real Douglas man is coming now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Tom. How are you? Hey, Tom. Tom, is game is in the radio. The real Douglas supporter. How long are we staying there? We stay probably until about... Uh, <laughs> Is there something over there, no reason? What's supposed to be wrong with him? Yeah, some shoulder in. Where is he? You had a piece somewhere, right? And I wrote something in the back. Thank you very much. 
Je vais vous dire, il a été pédé dans les gars. Non, je vais vous dire. Je vais vous dire. Je Welcome back to uh, Skibbereen. Five weeks ago, they met here two great teams, two great sides. At the end of the day, the men from Gaston Bay would be the first to admit that they were lucky to achieve a draw. A great two points in injury time meant that they're back here again. Douglas, for their part, thrilled everybody with their exciting football. And, of course, many neutrals in the crowd felt that it was to be their day as we went into injury time, but that was not the way it panned out. A number of changes already we can see in the uh, Douglas line. We'll come to that in a minute. The referee for this afternoon's game is none other than the Glanworth man, Jess Cummins, up to our left. Uh, our commentary position here, a small bit down the bank today because uh, the commentary box was unable to make its journey all the way over there. And uh, the referee checking, we'll talk about the teams in a minute. There is one change on the programme. Uh, Tomas Toomey, unfortunately, not to be able to take his uh, place in the side, but his uh, deputy is... Uh, Ronan Geary, it's first and uh, it's thrown away and Ronan McCarthy and of course I noticed straight away that Ronan McCarthy being watched by Wiseman a bit of shoulder and Jas Cummins spotted that, a good spot by Jas Cummins and Ferguson, David Larkin is out and who's going to take this one? The Douglas team line, the others follows in goal, they've got Teddy O'Donovan, the full back line, David McSweeney, Cormac Cahill and Brian uh, McCarthy, the half back line, John Grimes. Uh, Barry DC and Graham Swanton and taking this free is uh, Ronan Geary, the lad who came in as a late deputy if you like and Ronan Geary slashes it, it's all the way all about, a great point by Geary.
I think I was somewhere around the half back line in midfield. We got Ronan McCarthy and Barry Finn. The half forward line with Connor McCarthy. I'll have to keep a close eye in this one. Uh, David Lachan was picked out in Doc O'Callaghan. Uh, the full forward line, Ronan Geary on Coveney. And in the left corner forward position with John Farrell. McCarthy is off again. And McCarthy is fouled early on in the game. And the referee is going to call over. And there was an attempt there, seriously. And over coming across there, I think, is Gary O'Sullivan coming in. And uh, while there is a break and play there, we're going to have to. Uh, talk about the uh, uh, Castellan Bear team in goal of course David O'Driscoll the equaliser as he's affectionately known as down in Castellan Bear we'll tell you a little bit more about that later on No Tim O'Sullivan Sean Bono Sullivan and Barry Power make up the remainder of the full back line the half back line Noel Harrington Neil Murphy and uh, I think it's Seamus Harrington got back there. Donna Wiseman is out of midfield with Eddie O'Sullivan. And the half forward line, we'll have a look at that in a minute. But I think it would be Seamus Spencer. Yes, indeed, Gary O'Sullivan and uh, Martin O'Sullivan inside the corner. Sean Dean, Alan O'Regan and uh, Noel Murphy. And it's a free in. And again, it's going to be taken by that man, Ronan Geary. And uh, we're a minute, two minutes into the game. Geary's already off the point. He won from a free. Can he send this one straight between the post? And the answer to Connor is no. Coming off the post there, but going off for a wide ball. The kick out coming from Davy Odriskin is caught there by Gary O'Sullivan. He leaves it off to Noel Murphy. Nile Murphy, I should say, right up into the corner. But coming out and coming out, well, let me tell you, the full back line up there, very good for Douglas the last year. Likewise, down in the corner, Gear is coming out here. Barry Powell pushing the back the referee says to play on. And uh, very close line. Can uh, Barry Powell get it up? Barry Powell does get it up, and Barry Powell is fouled there. Ali O'Sullivan, of course, is the team coach here. He's the team coach. He does everything for Castledown Bear. And uh, they told he told me before the game to be hard for him to spend uh, half an hour inside the sin bin. And uh, Seamus Harrington takes this one and uh, screws off the boot there. David McSweeney's out underneath it. David McSweeney doesn't get it the first time. Very close to the sideline here. Can he be kept in play by the dock? Oh, well done. Good catch indeed. And uh, Seamus Harrington again gone back into the wing back position today and of course that happened in the county final as well and Josh Cummins says we'll take that back from where the offence was committed. <laughs> Seamus Harrington will take this from the just is after telling him that he must move it back a little bit and uh, he drills it in towards the full forward line there oh well caught again inside by Mickey Grimes I think it was or not Mickey Grimes uh, Johnny Grimes but it's very close to the sideline from opposition here cleared across the field though good ball and Douglas come over again oh on Coveney trying to get on the end of it but doesn't get there at the first time of action and uh, it's cleared out there by Smithy that's Noel Harrington and Noel Harrington a free in there and that free uh, Spencer is standing over it there and the referee gone back to have a word I think it's with uh, David Lachan I would imagine uh, I want to be careful about that now getting the names wrong from our position here Spencer is standing over this one and Seamus Spencer put in this onto the left foot. It's a mighty kick from Spencer, but underneath it, right up there in the corner, and off for a wide ball. The first one for the Castellan Bearman. Join us in commentary position today, uh, Jim Nolan and Jim. A tame enough start, I suppose. I think so. I think um, Ronan Geary kicked a great free there from the, in the first attack for, for Douglas. Eastside has had a wide since. I think the most in interesting change in the teams is uh, the way Douglas have put. Um, have changed around, or sorry, Castellan Bear have changed around their half back line. They brought um, uh, Seamus Harrington back wing back. I think they put Dunham Wise out midfield, probably to try to try to break uh, the, the grip of Ronan McCarthy out there. We'll see as the game progresses how that works. Yes, I found the kick out there. It's coming down the side of him, but good play again. Niall Murphy playing very well at centre half back, and Ronan McCarthy's done in at centre forward. Actually, changes there again by the Douglas men. And, uh, Seamus Harrington getting that one there and uh, pan pass it off in as far as Noel Murphy in the corner. Noel Murphy coming way out there and a lovely ball inside from Murphy, but it will be cleared out and good play again by the Douglas men. They're cleaning back there and David McSweeney, who was outstanding the last day, it must be said. And he takes a return pass there from Barry Finn and uh, gone, back, gone back to get it again. David McSweeney then clears it long. Maybe he should have done that the first time. David Larkin is out and David Larkin is knocking it down, but it's cleared by Noel Murphy again. And Niall Murphy says, Excuse me, Niall, for that one getting the names on. Comes to Adio Sullivan. Adio Sullivan to Seamus Harrington. Seamus Harrington is the left half back from Castellan Bear and he's 
he's drilled towards goal. Dangerous inside, but Teddy O'Donovan, the cool baller, will come out and good pass by Teddy O'Donovan. Plays it out quickly to Brian McCarthy. Brian McCarthy, the left corner back, and he's down in the corner there somewhere. He may come out of it some stage before morning. He's after doing that, and he gives it to Ronan McCarthy, who's now operating at centre half forward. And uh, Ronan McCarthy playing it behind as far as Barry DC. Barry DC, the Douglas been playing it a little bit shorter today, uh, using the long ball to good effect the last day. Very close to the line here. Can Ronan Geary keep it in play? He doesn't, and it goes out, I would imagine, for a line ball, and that line ball will be to Castone Bear. Quickly taken. It comes to Barry to. That ball didn't up there by Dunna Wiseman, Dunna Wiseman, and David McSweeney is out again. David McSweeney is playing so well up in that corner, back position for Douglas, had a blind at the last day too, and then he sends it up toward the full forward line here. Larkin is out from the full forward, but takes a belt here, and then he's fouled. David Larkin is fouled out there on the pitch, and uh, there's a free to the... Uh, Douglas made it, but it's a long way out and he takes it poorly taken ball but it comes and has the desired effect this with Geary the point scored a few minutes ago and Ronan Geary from 35 metres out drills it off and the second wide ball for the Douglas men I think Douglas could have been better off that stage party to uh, delay the ball off I think Ronan Geary had a chance of a shot but one of his players in the second midfielder um, Barry Finn had run free but uh, Ronan decided to have a shot himself it went wide there was a chance for the score on there that's indeed a fun to kick out there. It's one again, and uh, the cast over have been starting much brighter than that in the last day. It's gone up into Sean Dean's corner, and Sean Dean marked up there by Brian McCarthy. Sean Dean very close on the ground there, and it's cleared out again. Douglas come attack again. Good play by them as they move it up towards the full forward line. But the full can bring a lack and out at all. David Lack come inside. He's put it on the ground, and Lack and trying to get a shot in there, but good defending. Great defending there by Sean Bonner Sullivan, the full back. But uh, Douglas still having his with Ronan McCarthy. Ronan McCarthy trying to make an angle for himself, looking around, trying to give it off a hand pass. He succeeds doing that, and he gives it to Owen. Coveney, Coveney put it onto the right foot and Coveney sending that one and it goes off for a wide ball and uh, certainly that was a bit better for the Douglas men, they'll be disappointed with the finish but certainly the early ball working a good bit better there Jim. I think so Paddy, I think um, they've put um, David Larkin in full forward, he's causing problems inside for Sean Bond who had a, a very good game in the, in the, in the drawing game but he's, uh, at the moment David Larkin has given quite an amount of problem when he's out of good position off him. Yes indeed, the kick out will be coming from none other than David O'Driscoll and the equaliser kicks it out around midfield and it's got by Matthew Butcher, good play by Butcher and he gives it to the nephew who's moving very well indeed and that's Gary O'Sullivan, Gary O'Sullivan uh, maybe taking a little bit much out of it and then hand pass it off to Wiseman, Wiseman finding the other Butcher and this is Matthew, lovely ball for Matthew inside and this is better play now by the Castone Bearman to Wiseman and Wiseman shoots him away out and off another wide ball, the second one for the Douglas men and the score stays it was uh, a point to nil and a point to the Douglas men, no score yet to the Castone Bearman there after registering their second wide as well. That was an excellent move by Castellone Bear. I think uh, uh, I think the well, didn't done a wise to put the ball wide in the end, but it was a good move with both Gary and um, both Gary and Matt Little involved in the move. But um, a good move with a bad miss in the end. Good move but a bad miss and the kicker will be coming from Terry O'Donovan, the cool bar and painter supreme as he drills it toward the far side of the field. A huge kick out and good play up there, Ronan McCarthy rushing onto it. And uh, that good play by them. And uh, you should have uh, given Barry DC, I think they could run McCarthy. Barry DC certainly gives it back. Good play by him as he moves on. And it's Barry Finn moving into a good position. Barry Finn put it onto the right foot, but the shot was weak in the end. And Davy O'Driscoll will say, Got a meal Mahagod. And Davy clear it out there. Can he be kept in play over the far side of the field? The answer is no in the line ball there. Good play by Barry Finn. I thought it was uh, Ronan McCarthy, but fair play to Barry Finn. And he delivered the pass and they was there and they intercollected. Unfortunately, maybe the finish didn't match the great play out the field, but it's a free nonetheless, or a line ball nonetheless to the Douglas men and did I uh, this position the last day Castell Bear got a goal at some stage in the game we're nine minutes into it and we still have only got one point on the scoreboard which by the way we can't see and Ronan McCarthy's calling this one another wide ball and that's the third one for uh, the Douglas men or the fourth man for the uh, Douglas lads and uh, Jim, certainly they could do it a few scores because uh, even the last day maybe it was a little bit wetter, but conditions are good enough for football out there. I think so, party. it's a lovely day. There's, there's no win there. Uh, doing the foot conditions seem quite good. But um, I think at the moment, Douglas have kicked four wides. Castellan have kicked two. Douglas probably that little bit on top, but they'll need the scores because Bear or Castellan are going to come into this game at some stage. It's indeed a great play there again by AD playing a lovely ball up as far as Spencer and uh, the Cupid up the side is moving into the wing forward position. Then he plays a lovely ball inside and it's good by him. Uh, the John Dean have it in there and he gives it back to Dunna Wiseman. Dunna Wiseman moving out the field today and then he gives a left-footed pass. I don't know who that was meant for, but the goalkeeper comes out and good play by him and leaves it up out over the line ball to bring their whites tallying out the tree.
Siobhan, still 1 0 to Douglas after 10 minutes. Yeah. Wow. And the kick out, a massive kick out for Daddy O'Donnell, right into midfield, they're rising underneath it. All good play by the man who came in, Gary O'Sullivan. Gary O'Sullivan plays inside, and Seamus uh, having to give it to Wiseman. Wiseman cutting his way through, trying to put it onto his right foot, and Wiseman from 45 metres out, but another, another wide ball. Lee bringing the wide tally to the Lee's easier to do the wide tally here than scores on a wide total after uh, 10 minutes of the game. We've got four wides each, and uh, Jimmy were saying maybe that Douglas should have got a few scores, but certainly they were opportunities. Maybe a little bit more difficult, but nonetheless, uh, one or two of them could gone, have gone over. Yes, Paddy, I don't know why he's playing very well around midfield. Um, a good move by Castellon Bear. I'm not too sure if, if moving um, Ronan McCattis in the forward is, is the solution. I'd probably have left Ronan on midfield for a while to see how he works out there because he's probably better coming to meet the ball. You know, he'd be more dangerous moving onto the ball, well, whereas now he's moving back and has a third with the ball. Yes, indeed, and certainly I think the Castellon Bearmen are a little bit happier with that move. There's still, it's only one point uh, to Douglas. The Castellon Bearmen have yet to score. Is that Alan O'Regan I see on it down there in the corner? And uh, we'll tell you a little bit uh, about that a little later on. And it's very close down the corner there. Jess has gone out to have a chat with somebody. And the somebody might tell us down there in the crowd what's happening over there. But it's, it would appear that it's a free in and a free. Uh, I would imagine that it's a free to the... Uh, Castellon Bear lads and when the play will resume and uh, they uh, anxious to get their first score there after going to 11 minutes without getting scored. They didn't do too much scoring in the first game in normal time. They usually reserve this for the uh, injury time situation. That's their speciality down in the Bear Peninsula and uh, Donald Holland not impressed with those comments out there but it's coming out there and great play by that man up in the corner back there for uh, Douglas. None other than David McSweeney who again finds, uh, I don't think he has found touch very close to the sideline there and uh, And this line ball, Doc Callahan is underneath it and uh, running out with there. Matthew Butcher, I was talking to before the game, all he wants is the legs to last for another hour and 20 minutes, he said, and then he'd be happy. I don't know whether he was telling me he was going to retire or anything like that, but he's a lot of football played and how dearly he would love to win an intermediate championship medal. It's a free out off for Douglas. Uh, Douglas have yet to win the intermediate county. In actual fact, counties have been quite scarce in the Douglas Club in Castletown Bear. Uh, they're a little bit better with their record than they won the junior back in, I think it was 1977. Uh, but their intermediate championship came in 1986, lost in 1990 to McCroom, back today in the final. And of course, they are delighted, considering that they were looking up to get there the last day. We are 13 minutes into it, and we still have only got one point. A lot of good football being played. And now Douglas coming on, but Wiseman definitely playing very, very well out around midfield. And certainly the switch of him by Ali O'Sullivan has been a marvellous, marvellous move up towards Spencer. Spencer moving into position. And uh, Spencer wearing the number 11 over there and playing out at number 10. Good play by him. And uh, the referee said there was an infringement coming in there and Seamus Spencer by Johnny Grimes and they will be free in and he's gone over to have a word and uh, he's pointing to the spot telling him that the play free will be taken in a not more advantageous position and uh, I think from our position here it's Matthew Butcher that's standing over this Martin O'Sullivan and uh, civil engineer this is his opportunity to open the scoring for the Castellon Bearman we had 14 minutes into the game as uh, Matty comes to strike can those uh, legs get this one over the bar and the answer my friends is yes a good score by him I think that free party was for uh, the, the left corner back was holding the, the corner forward, so the referee spots out the corner was uh, an easy free for Marty, taps it over the bar. I don't know that any such thing is an easy free Jim, but anyway, they're all, that's an important one because it gets the Cassidy Bearman on the scoring. We're after 15 minutes of the game and. Uh, the kicker would be coming by none other than the mighty Teddy O'Donovan drilling in the midfield. What a fabulous kick out by him. It's uh, bunching out there, but again, it's been caught there. Adi O'Sullivan played much better today than he did last day. And uh, he gives it outside, and Adi getting the return, uh, trying to find a little bit of space for himself. And Adi should uh, give it back to Spencer. Good play by him. And again, it's Wiseman. Wiseman playing so well indeed. And a long ball in from him, drop it inside. And Alan O'Regan is in there around the danger area as well. And O'Regan with his left foot and uh, gone off there. Oh, good play by Douglas. And there was definitely a uh, dangerous situation there but Barry DC will clear it out there for Douglas and certainly Douglas living very very dangerously indeed and uh, this one is coming across and uh, great play by Noel Harrington he'll give it back as far as Martin Butcher Martin Butcher will give it to Seamus Harrington Seamus Harrington will deliver with the left foot the man with the uh, the pop down in the hole in the wall and I'm sure there'll be some celebrations there for a long time to come if that one went over 
and uh, run. Yes. Yes, indeed, Robert, and thanks very much for uh, coming over here to Skibbereen. And at the moment, it's still uh, level pegging. It's a pint apiece. Ronan Geary opening the score for Douglas after 35 seconds uh, when he pinted from a free, and then we had to wait for 14 minutes before we got the first score from uh, Castone Bearman, and that coming from the boot of Martin uh, O'Sullivan, that from a free as well. A number of wides on both sides, and I think at this stage it's five to Castone Bear, and I think four to Douglas. A uh, number of switches on um, both sides today, and uh, most noteworthy, I suppose, Donna Wiseman is out around midfield. Ronan McCarthy did start us into forward. He had, the Douglas men have decided that we need, that they need to have McCarthy out around midfield. They have done that one now, and Ronan, uh, he's going to be marked by Donna Wiseman, and Wiseman certainly has started this game very, very brightly indeed, as has A.D. O'Sullivan, and it's now as Noel Murphy, and uh, he kicks a desperate wide there, and uh, Noel not very accurate in front of the goal on that occasion. He bringing the wide tally there to six for the um, Castone Bearman, and Jim certainly... Uh, Douglas not at all in the game as they were the last day. Started by but Castone Bear have taken over, even though they're finding it hard as well to reach the target. Yeah, I think tactically what they did, they started they started um, Roland McCarthy midfield, but after about five minutes they moved minutes into forward. But um, I think that they actually conceded midfield after about uh, after the first five minutes. Um, Castellon Bear have been mostly in control around the middle of the field, so they've just moved Roland McCarthy back out to midfield now. So uh, I think they try to break the Castellon Bear dominance. I think the move of um, the move to wing to midfield of Donna Wiseman has moved a, a master move by Castellan Bear. Yes, indeed, and uh, we still can't find out the score of the Skibreen versus Avondale United game in the Munster Junior Cup. The goalkeeper uh, has arrived, the Skibreen goalkeeper arrived. He's uh, covering up as a photographer here today as well. I don't see too much dirt on him, whether he was doing any diving up the ball in there towards the square and uh, gone off for another wide ball. This is absolutely ridiculous. The number of wides are uh, climbing up on this one. It's seven to Castellan Bear, and I think we've got four to Douglas. And... Uh, the accuracy in front of goal leaving a lot to be desired. It's still at one point apiece, would you imagine, or would you believe? And we're 18 minutes into the game. We'll be bringing you other stories around the county today, of course, none other than that great county junior hauling final between Castle Lions and Corsi Rovers. And uh, also the game up and down between the locals up there and the car team in the, I think it's the fourth or fifth round of poor kick out there by Teddy O'Donovan. And, uh, but the danger is averted. Uh, the backs there equal to challenge and it comes to the centre half back and Barry DC gets it. Barry DC playing it off over the far side of the field. And uh, Douglas getting a rare opportunity to attack. And certainly the game not at all as uh, exciting as lively as was the last day. And when we were last, when we left it in uh, Park Green, the score was Castle Lines 1 3, Corsi Rovers 3 points. And. Uh, this uh, the, the that free cut off there and uh, Sean Bonner Sullivan said got a mark good for that one and he'll take it with all these and one and give it to Niall Murphy. Niall Murphy, of course, one of them in who starred in the Bear of Victory uh, in the county scene a final a couple of weeks ago and of course a lot of waters we said got under the bridge since the last time we were here and a lot of middle got all good play but Ronan Geary the chance went to big in there and certainly the Douglasmen uh, are better than the way they're playing at the moment because Martin O'Sullivan is dominating now and winning a great ball and soling from his uh, back from the half back line he's gone back up towards the full for half hour line and then he drills a lovely ball inside the goalkeeper Teddy needs to be brave and uh, he goes back and collects it and then he uses the fist to get it out and uh, a little bit of messy play there but Douglas will uh survive this one but the poor kick out or put the poor clearance will put them on the back on the pressure again and certainly they would need to get the teeth a bit between the teeth if they're to come into this game it's still only a point apiece I know but Castellan Bear are very very dominant and one would feel that it's only a matter of time before they could lose but the man is the, on the ball is John Fall and played well the last day John Fall one of the youngsters in the side looking for someone to give it to Fines Geary the man who came in as a substitute well he was on from the start and he drilled up toward the full forward line and underneath it a man who played a great game the last day Owen oh, Coveney and Coveney is drilling his way through he shows Oh, it's a save superbly by Davy O'Driscoll. Davy O'Driscoll in the side today. And it comes to David Larkin, and David Larkin sends it wide. And that one goes off for a wide ball. The best bowl of play that we've had in this game so far. 
and certainly there, uh, Owen Coveney had an opportunity, but it was a great, great save by uh, Davy O'Driscoll and Jim. I know you've seen him play in the past, but he certainly uh, is worth his place after that. Owen Coveney is a very good player, won a great ball there, got a great pass in from, um, from midfield, rounded his man, went in, took a great shot from the fairness of the goalkeeper, made a great save, I think. You know, for a goalkeeper that came back from the, from the wilderness, that was a great save and given great confidence. Yes, indeed, and certainly the wilderness must be a great spot to be for the last couple of years because Davy made a superb save. We are you with 103 FM right across the county in association with the hole in the wall. And if you need a call there for your friendly point, there's a man out there who'll fill it for you, none other than Seamus Harrington. Ronan McCarthy trying to get in on the game, but he's finding it so hard today. And certainly I would say that these cats don't bear men. Uh, learning a lot since the last day out, and uh, Ollie picking up a lot of. Uh, moves in a lot of switches and will be quite pleased even though there's still only a point in there. He's gone in as far as Sean Dean's corner. Dean is out and a way out from goal, trying to drill his way through and he finds uh, Martin O'Sullivan on the half forward line and still only a point apiece would you believe. Martin give it inside and Noel Murphy. Noel Murphy is the ball knocked away from him and good play over there by Brian McCarthy and the ball breaks as far as a uh, good ball inside Gary O'Sullivan and Teddy O'Donovan's underneath it. Gary O'Sullivan's the wing forward, Teddy O'Donovan's the Douglas goalkeeper and he clears it out with the right foot but only straight into the hands of none other than Gary O'Sullivan who throws it back as far as Noel Murphy and Noel will uh, give the pass back but this time he gives it to a Douglas man. Maybe he's not the greediest man in the world and running across there to get it. Uh, can the Barry Finn, I keep calling him Barry Finn, yes, Barry Finn trying to get on in the end of it but it's uh, Getty across there, Ronan McCarthy winning it. Now, can Douglas build from this? We've got 21 minutes gone into it and we've still only a point from either side. And attacking there is Johnny Grimes. Johnny Grimes in the right half back, a lovely ball up as far as Larkin. Larkin is playing at full forward, trying to get inside, doesn't get inside because he's fouled 45 metres out from goal. And this is an opportunity uh, for Douglas to register their second score in the game. And a uh, score so, so hard to come by for both sides. And Ronan McCarthy standing over this gym and certainly uh, Douglas could do with a score at this stage. I think so, but I think in fairness to both teams, the approach play is very good, but the finishing yeah. is bad. I mean, there's some great football being played out on the field, but when they get into the scoring range, they just don't seem to be able to score. So hopefully that will increase because everything else in the game is quite good. Yes, and Ronan McCarthy, he's having a, the referee is calling over here, a player from either side, uh, Barry Finn, and uh, I think it's Eddie O'Sullivan, the two players being spoken by Jess Cummins, and uh, yes, they shake hands and everything will be OK, or at least Jess is convinced that everything is OK, and that'll do Jess particularly well. Jess Cummins, the referee from Glenwood, and uh, free will be taking and uh, don't know why man watch him out there he's standing everywhere where no Ronan McCarthy goes this one is taken shot by Ronan and the Doc Callahan has it the Moon Tour scholar from Christians sends that one over the bar and a very good score and dear don't know Callahan and a very good score and a courageous score some people felt maybe the Ronan would have gone for it himself but uh, that one the second score for the Douglas men that coming after 23 minutes and a good score Jim it was indeed I think like you said probably think most people thought that Ronan McCarthy from a fifth there was less than 50 yards would have gone for himself kicked the short ball to Doc O'Callaghan and uh, in fairness, under pressure, he scored a great point. So there we have it with seven minutes left here, and the score uh, on the score line of Douglas two points, Castletown Bear one. We hand back to Park Ewing. <laughs> Yes, indeed, and Seamus Spencer we need over there on the far side of the field, and Spencer trying to get it onto that uh, polished and eager left foot, and I don't know who the pass was for there, but it's certainly a Douglas man will collect it, and uh, clear it out with all the guys in the world, and it's gone back as far as Don Lock Callahan, Don Lock Callahan helping out, and uh, certainly a lot of Douglas men reckon this could be the man that would break the deadlock today, he gives it up as far as Geary, but Geary has it taken away from him, and Seamus Harrington, proprietor of the hole in the wall, winning it there, and uh, playing back and left half back, and he's fouled, and there'll be a free into the Castone Bearman, and the free is quickly taken, spotting a player, but none other than Douglas player, and a lot of passes going astray, let me tell you. And uh, that player, ball going up as far as Tomas, uh, as far as Owen Coveney, way out from goal over there. And uh, Coveney moving his way in, but he's still 46 metres out from goal. Can he drill it inside to somebody? And then he gives a lovely hand pass on. This is good play to Johnny Farrell, and he's the corner forward. Johnny Farrell has the ball taken away from him. Great play over there by the Castor Bearmen and by Noel Tim O'Sullivan and Noel Tim O'Sullivan clearing it out who's underneath it Harrington uh, not Harrington but Ronan McCarthy and Ronan McCarthy doesn't catch it cleanly and that will do them fine and it comes to Sean Dean Sean Dean coming off on the wing forward corner forward position soling it up and slowing it down and he gives it to Wiseman Wiseman drill it low on the ground up as far as Noel Murphy Noel Murphy brother of Nyland centre back Noel is a corner forward O'Regan hasn't done much up in the corner yet but uh, there was a push in the back and the referee spot that one but he will do something before this game is over let me assure you and guarantee you that. Uh, 
as the score remaining and two points to one in favor of the Douglas men and uh, this kick out and uh, not the kick out of free had been taken by Teddy O'Donovan and uh, the referee spotting an infringement and certainly Jas Cummins very well up with the player today and spotted an earlier infringement as well which uh, uh, the advantage to crew to Gaston Bear where Martin O'Sullivan's free was brought in because the referee spotted uh, an infringement inside and Jas Cummins right up there with the play and uh, Jas reckoned that we've been critical of him in the past well Jas we compliment you today on your performance so far no, but this one is for Rona McCarthy. The free is for Rona, but he's been mapped by two. Castor Bearman, three now. And uh, the boot going in there, but the referee says to leave it to Geary. Geary from 40 meters, really had good. And between the pause, a mighty point from Rona and Geary. A superb score. Um, a very good ball in by Rona McCarthy, but Castor Bear closed it down very, very quickly. He turned him back out, barely got the ball out to uh, Rona and Geary. And under pressure from about 40, 40 yards, to say 40 meters, he kicked a great point. And uh, Ronan Geary into the side of corner forward and certainly paying his way. And he does top this corner again. Can he get this one? He does under fer ferocious pressure, it must be said. And he gives it across the field. And now Douglas come attacking once again. And uh, this ball very close to silent here. And David Larkin operating at full forward, but out around the corner. And then he gives a good pass and takes the return. And Larkin is moving and then he turns it inside. I wonder does it go over the ball. The referee says it got off wide and... Uh, there's a dispute there, I would imagine, but it was calling, whether it called enough and a difficult enough one to call, and certainly from our position here, it was calling. Whether it called before it reached the post, I'll never know, but uh, the, we may check the video afterwards and tell you that one, but it's uh, the score remains as it is, three points to one, and uh, Demi O'Driscoll, the veteran of the side, comes to kick out. I'll tell you a little bit more about Demi in a little minute, but it's kick out, AD catches it and was going to pick it off the ground. And in fairness to Eddie O'Sullivan, it was one of his own players, I think, that knocked the ball from him, and it's a free into Douglas. And this free will be taken by Rona McCarthy. Yes. And welcome back here, Robert, and we can tell you that uh, right now there's a free into Douglas. The score is Douglas, three points, uh, Castor Bear one. And uh, the play has really livened up since we started doing the uh, live commentary on it on the radio. Just to tell you that it's uh, Ronan Geary standing over this one. He's already scored one from play, one from free. And now he's another opportunity. The proprietor of the hole in the wall is giving his... Uh, Autograph to the referee, Jas Cummins, out there and probably tell him that he'll get a point for a top defence if he lets him off with this. And uh, Seamus has made his peace with Jas and they'll be free in and uh, Ronan Geary. And the way Geary has been kicking, certainly very good today. And he's gone back in. The referee is having a word with another member of the Castone Bear sick to back in there. But there's a free in and the free will be to none other than Douglas. We're 28 minutes into the game. Ronan Geary standing over this one and he sends this one delicately over the bar. And it's now four points and certainly another good score and the best bow to play for the last couple of minutes have come from Douglas, Jim. I think so. I think it's fair to say that since Ronan McCarthy took back to midfield, uh, Douglas got much more back into the game. I think it's fair to say that when they leave the ball in fast into David Lack and he's causing a lot of trouble inside the fullback, he's going to need a ball, let it off very fast. And uh, that, in that case, he took the return, to, uh, return pass again, had to be brought down. So I think for the last 10 minutes, the, the play of Ronan McCarthy, particularly around midfield, uh, is paying dividends for Douglas. Yes, indeed. And mention of David Lack, and we take this opportunity to send best wishes to his father, Brendan, who is in hospital recovering from a hip operation. He's missed all the Douglas matches that they've won. He came to one and they drew it and uh, are the home is looking good I wonder for Brendan and the Douglas lads but Seamus Harrington has it and good play by Harrington then as far as uh, Spencer and Seamus Spencer uh, playing it low on the ball low on the ground to Noel Murphy and Noel Murphy winning in a mound of ball coming off in the corner playing quite well he gives it back to Eddie and Eddie O'Sullivan decides to leave it long in towards the full forward line Spencer's underneath it but doesn't get it at the first time and uh, gone back there to get it is Barry DC and uh, the ball is taken away from his end Spencer the goalkeeper's out and Spencer side foots it and uh, danger there averted and certainly that was an opportunity to win the begging deal and uh, good play Terry O'Donovan playing so well and then gives it to Ronan McCarthy Ronan McCarthy drilling into the corner and David Larkin is out there again Larkin certainly superb over in the far corner today a superb at full forward and coming out and winning that there and there'll be an opportunity now for the Douglas men it's about 40 metres out and it's quite a difficult one but it's four points to one and it's in as far as the full forward line Douglas have again as far as Geary but he's in his wrong side he's used to the other corner and then he drills it across here and right underneath it Barry Finn can Barry Finn get onto the end of it the two gum, the gum shield is after falling out and the ball is after falling away from him and the Castor Bearman will clear it out with all the ease in the world and it comes to Seamus Harrington 
and Seamus Harrington, the wing back. And uh, there we have it at halftime, just to tell you that it's four points to three, uh, four points to one in favour of Douglas. And we hand back to Parker Ring and uh, to get the latest score. Thanks, Thanks. I don't know what James doing. I don't know what James doing. James doing. Right, can you hear us now? And Avril. Avril. Avril, can you hear us? And Jesus, where's she gone to now? Avril. Yeah, fine, right, okay, we're ready to go, right, give, give party the, the goal, right? Hello. Yes, indeed, and welcome back. Just the second half has commenced here in uh, Skibbereen, and uh, the general consensus of opinion of the experts at halftime, and certainly I made a few of them in my travels, uh, was that it wasn't the greatest game in the world. But uh, in fairness to it, even though scores were low in that first half, uh, there was quite an amount of uh, good play out the field, but the both sides missing a number of unbelievable chances. But the score at halftime, that's all that really matters, is four points to one, and now it's the... Uh, Douglas are the Douglas men having the early attack, but it's back with the key advantage with Castletown Bear again. And uh, an opportunity for them is drilled into the full forward line. That man, David McSweeney, superb in the right cornerback position. He tries to work it out and uh, maybe should have worked it out a little bit better. It comes to Graham Swanton. Graham Swanton gives it out to David again. And David McSweeney, the man wearing number two, but plays so deep out the field and then drill it right up into the corner there, uh, the corner forward position, but it's taken out there. And uh, Seamus Harrington, who's playing superbly at wing back, the ball comes into him and he gives it to Wiseman. We Wiseman to lead down the far side of the field, but cleared out nothing the less again by Johnny Grimes. He's the right half back for Douglas. He's on his own side of the field and he delivers a 40 yard pass up towards the goal. David Larkin's legs won't carry him that far. And uh, there's a mopping up operation done there. Noel Tim O'Sullivan give it out and he's done, uh, I was going to say he's done better passes than that, but uh, I stand corrected. It was a fabulous pass. And uh, Marty has it, not Marty will have it now. And uh, he lucky that he has his hands after that tackle there. And uh, Douglas come attack again. Good play by Douglas. It's with Tomas Toomey, not with Tomas Toomey. I beg your pardon, it's with Owen Coveney. And Owen Coveney, a mighty kick from Coveney. A mighty point from Coveney, let me tell you. And that one from about 45 metres out. And certainly there was a lot of confidence about that kick, Jim. There was indeed. That was a great score by Owen Coveney. A very dangerous player, a very lively player. But I, I think the highlight of that score was that the hard work that the Douglas players did out the field, they harassed and chased. And the very last ball before it got to him was just a, more or less a sliding tackle, I suppose, half a free. But it was a very well won and a, a great score. A great score indeed. And we can tell you that in the dying minutes of the uh, soccer game across the road, that. Uh, I won't say he conceded a goal, but uh, Avondale United got a late, late winner against Skibbereen. They are now out of the uh, Munster Junior Cup, and uh, they will be kick out here whenever the play will begin. Uh, but uh, the scoreline at the moment is the one that matters. It's five points to four in favour of Douglas. And uh, five points to one, I should say, in favour of Douglas. I mean, here after getting uh, a heart attack, he probably is about a thousand pounds in Douglas the way he turned around and looked at me about that one, but the kicker will be coming. And uh, goalkeeper Supreme standing over it, and uh, David driving it long into midfield. David O'Driscoll, they call him the equaliser because in 19, I think it was 1986, when they last won the county, they played Donnerail in the first round of that county. And in that match, they were down a point with time almost up, and they were awarded a 45. And Davy O'Driscoll was the goalkeeper on that day. He came out and uh, he stood over that one and sent it over the bar. And from that day to eternity, he'll be known as the equaliser. He sailed it over the bar and they went on to win a county when they beat Kilchanik. But certainly they're a long way from winning a county now because they trailed by four points. It's five points to one. Seamus Harrington uh, is taking this one from about 45 or 66 metres out. And uh, 
Seamus Aaron I don't know whether he's trying to find O'Regan or not I said he'd get 1-1 before the game is over and uh, he's yet to score Alan O'Regan skinned that one wide and uh, I know that he came into the game carrying an injury a lot of doubt about him a lot of talk about Alan O'Regan but he's such an accomplished Gaelic footballer you can never rule his contribution out until the final whistle goes Castletown Bear of course hoping to make it a three in a row for the division Bear are already crowned champions and uh, they're at senior and under 21 level the kick out coming and uh, Teddy O'Donovan standing over this one, uh, probably better known as a hurling goalkeeper in some neck of the woods, but he's driving it into midfield. Teddy O'Donovan and the idiot is coming in. Shane Spencer gathers. Seamus Spencer is the right half forward, and he delivers a lovely ball inside. O'Regan is standing. Oh, he's not going to get it. Oh, Cahill can shake his hands after that one. Come on, Cahill. And that was certainly great play by young Cahill. And uh, not too sure about what age he is, but certainly he's an experienced player to come out with a ball like that and leave uh, Alan O'Regan inside him. He gathered it. He did clear it out over the line, wise men is indeed, he's the club PRO as well, and it's between O'Regan, O'Regan gathers this time, and he's burning his way in, and he finds the target, but the goalkeeper is equal to the challenge, who else would have got that one out, and Castellon Bear come attacking once again, it's with Niall Murphy, the centre back, he wins it back in his own 45 metre line, they need to get scores now, they're trailed by four, five points to one, they won't get scores with play like that, and Johnny Grimes wins it, Johnny Grimes is the right half back for Douglas, straight towards Larkin, Larkin is playing so well, Coming out from the full forward belt and playing right up into the corner. Can they get another score here, Douglas? A lovely ball across. Oh, good play. Great play indeed by the Castletown Bear. No team, I think it was, got saved the day there for the Douglas men. And it's coming this side of the field. And uh, they cut, cut it off again. Great Douglas coming forward again. Driving forward in Ronan McCarthy. Ronan McCarthy giving a lovely ball out as far as Conor McCarthy, the hairdressing brother. And uh, Conor McCarthy leaving it as far as Larkin. Larkin is fouled and there's a free end. And it's five points to one before this free is taken. We're five minutes into the second half, and certainly we thought at one stage in the first half that Douglas were throwing away the kick so many wides. Then it was the turn to cast on Bear to do an absolutely unbelievable amount of wide shooting. But uh, the Douglas men starting the half very, very positive indeed, and uh, winning a free in there. And I don't know, I'm too sure who's going to take this one, but I would imagine if it was anyone else other than Ronan Geary, he's already scored two. Can he make it three to add to it? The five already they have on the bar, and you can note on the scoreboard, and it's gone over the bar. Six points, and Ronan Geary is the man again. Good scores indeed by him, and uh, uh, very important scores, and a good start to the second half, Jim. It is indeed two uh, fast points for Douglas. Uh, they worked half them. Their attack, is, their, their attack seems to be getting the, getting the, the range at the moment, maybe from freeze, but they're causing problems for the Castellan Bearbacks, and the Castellan Bearbacks are having to fold them. Castellan Bear backs falling them as right, but Castellan Bear are coming again. O'Regan is out this time, gathers, it falls away from him, and Davy will take it away. David McSweeney, the right corner back, and he drills it up as far as the right corner forward, Conor McCarthy, and Conor McCarthy got inside, and he gives it inside to Ronan Geary, but the play has got off there, and Castellan Bear half back line tidied up a little bit. They need to tidy it up more, and now Castellan Bear come attacking. It's with Seamus Harrington, and Seamus Harrington drilling a lovely ball across the field, but Cuddy Cott will be Johnny Grimes wearing the number five of his beloved Douglas. Gives it to David McSweeney a little bit tight, but he's taken out by a man who's playing very well. Barry DC tight and low to the ground, a good footballer, and he leaves it behind for Brian McCarthy. Brian McCarthy delivers it left footed up as far as the corner. Larkin is out, and Larkin lets it run on in over the head. And uh, certainly a lot of guile in this man, and he gives it now as far as Conor McCarthy. And the hairdresser is going to shoot from out the field, and uh, God, that one nearly. Uh, coming off the hands there of Davy O'Driscoll, but Davy O'Driscoll, a veteran of many campaigns, came out of retirement because of the injury to Padraig Crowley, and uh, Castellan Bear winning that one to bring it out of defence. It's with Noel Murphy, and Noel Murphy, his brother Niall, is also in the side, soling across his own half back line, and uh, give it to Adi O'Sullivan. Adi O'Sullivan being well mapped out there by Barry Finn. Adi trying to give it inside, gives it to Wiseman, and Wiseman, can he find Marty Butcher? Marty is running alongside him, and he doesn't spot him, but he's going to walk straight past him, and he's still going through. Even though that the bones may be light, he's a strong individual. Ronan McAgatty is coming to him, and he gives it off to Alan O'Regan, and Alan O'Regan from 45 metres out delivers it off for a wide ball and takes the heavy shoulder after that. And certainly the size, the game is warming up now. Nine wides to Castletown Bear, six to Douglas, I think it is, and certainly an amount of wides here. And uh, a lot of good football, and the crowd getting really behind it now, Jim. Yeah, I think uh, Castellan Bear could have done with a score there. That was a great run by, um, by Dunno Wiseman. Um, gave a good pass to Alan O'Regan. Alan O'Regan was at about 35 yards out the right wing. He had a cut, but uh, unfortunately for him, the ball went wide. Six points to one down the score. 
uh, remains in favour of Dull Douglas and the kick out is coming from Teddy O'Donovan Rich. He drives in in the midfield and uh, who's going to collect it there very close to the line with Johnny Grimes and get onto the end of it and Johnny Grimes that was fouled. The referee said Johnny Grimes is more than fouled and they'll be free to Douglas from their own right half back position. I, I think in, in the first 20 minutes I think Marty O'Sullivan and Seamus Pinsley were causing havoc in the half forward for Castell Bear. The Douglas half back has come to terms with that and I think that's a, a big reason why Douglas have taken over a little bit. Yes, indeed, and a pass to win the straight there. It comes to the full forward, and it's with Owen Coveney, and Owen Coveney drilling his way forward, and uh, that one gone off there, and uh, the, the place, the ball still in play, though, and a free into Douglas once again. Six points to one the Douglas men lead. Certainly to take some superhuman comeback now. If the Douglas men were to come back into this one, standing over it, Ronan McCarthy, I would imagine, and uh, certainly a player that personifies all the good in Douglas as he stands over this one. Six points to one before Ronan McCarthy uh, stands to take this one. Difficult conditions, Ronan McCarthy sails it, and over the bar from Ronan McCarthy. Seven points to one, McCarthy coming good. And uh, an unbelievable statistic, I suppose, from a Castone Bear point of view, that we are nine minutes into the second half and they've only scored one point in that game, one point during that time, and that point came in the 14 minutes from a free by Martin O'Sullivan. Three scores after half time for Douglas. Owen Coveney, Ronan Geary, and Ronan McCarthy. And uh, two from Fries. The first one was a great point by uh, the little youngster inside at full forward. I won't call him little, but Douglas Castell Bear half back time improving. And they're finding Martin Butcher now. Martin O'Sullivan. And certainly 35 years of age and showing exuberance of youth. And then drilling inside. O'Regan, will he go? Oh, David O'Re. David, uh, David McSweeney, how he caught that one, I'll never know. Certainly a series candidate for man of the match, and then he plays it out as far as Ronald McCarthy. McCarthy is grounded there by Spencer, and there will be a free out. And out there I can see the team coach and uh, one of the mentors from Douglas, that's Martin Kelleher, the former Kilmore player, captain of the court team in 1987 to win a junior county. Their coach and trainer, uh, Peter Fagan, is the coach trainer of Douglas. The manager is Norman Lawton, and the selectorial duties by them, and also by Michael O'Regan, Finbar Birmingham, Finbar Birmingham, I should say, and Martin Kelleher. Can they be the five wise men that would bring a cup to Douglas? It's a long time since they had any cup on down in that neck of the woods, but certainly this one would be sweet. Larkin has it in the car, full forward, burnt out by the corner, and uh, he tries to drill a ball across, but it's cut off by an old Tim. Castone Bear working well outside from the back, and they need scores and need them badly. Seven points to win this trail, and we're... Ten minutes into the second half, the ball is dropping down and Max Sweeney rises again and he's growing in stature as the hour goes on and certainly I never saw him before in the last game, they tell me that he's the best looking man in Douglas and he won that one and won it well, he gives it out to Geary, Ronan Geary gives it inside and told Larkin, Larkin is playing well today and I'm not too sure whether his father's clued into this or not but we send him best wishes as he recovers from a hip operation, the Douglas uh, youngsters begin to sing in the far side of the field, they brought six bus loads down here today, they brought five the last day, an extra bus load of supporters and uh, an injury over there, one of the Douglas players down, but certainly a huge mountain out to climb for Castone Bear, Jim. I think so. Uh, at the moment, after 40 minutes of play, they've only scored one point. It looks as like if they'll have to get a goal. They're probably a team capable of getting a goal, but at the moment, Douglas are playing all the good football. Um, as you said there earlier, um, the, the backs are playing very, very well, particularly Dave McSween. He has cut three or four great balls. There are two superb balls there in the last two minutes. Um, Ronan McCarthy still doing well in the middle of the field. Um, David Lack, an outstanding inside full forward. So overall, Douglas are playing the better football at the moment. Douglas playing the better football and they win it again and they have a player loose here if they spot him. And Martin O'Sullivan has gone back to uh, cut that one off there. A free to Douglas when the play will eventually come in. And uh, Owen Coveney was the man that was fouled out there. And uh, the last time they were in an intermediate final was back in 1935. You can get out the calculator and work that one out for yourself. It's a long, long time ago, let me tell you. They were beaten in the Hurling and Football Final in that year. And it's a long time coming to Douglas, but there's a long way to go. And at 12 minutes gone, 62 years, and the statistician is good at the match. Um, 62 years to wait to get to a county final and never to win one. And uh, they'll be, they won a junior, I think, back around 1962 when they defeated Middleton. But that's all in history. We're talking about present day football. Douglas are leading. Castone Bear with uh, something like 12 minutes gone in the second half and seven points to one. Martin O'Sullivan though wins it for Castone Bear. He gives the ball up and it's cut off again by that man, David McSweeney. The left corner, back, right corner, back, call him what you like. It's with Barry McCarthy. He caught him, McCarthy, I should say, the hairdresser right up into the corner. And uh, 
very close to the sideline there and Ronan Geary trying to keep in play and uh, Douglas come attacking once again good play by them and Dach O'Callaghan really a lovely ball across the square can he be collected here by uh, Lachan David Lachan shoots and offered a wide ball there was an opportunity there and it was good play again the Dach O'Callaghan was involved in as he was some good moves in the first half the wide tally is 7 now for Douglas but an unbelievable 9 I think it's for Castletown Bear so they're mounting up on both sides of the field Jas Cummins looks at the watch we can tell you Jas you're approaching the 13 to 14 minute of it and uh, the kick out coming there and a poor and I won't say poor enough kick out and uh, the Gaston Bearmen are under pressure back in that defence and they try to work it out and uh, Douglas come attacking again and they're playing it low on the ground and it's gone into Johnny Fall the corner forward John Fall puts it onto the right foot the right foot is good from John Fall he clinches the air and that one has gone over the bar the Douglas people around us here are absolutely cracking up as John Farrell sends that one over, another good score by him. It's now eight points to one, and certainly Jim is looking good for the City lads. Indeed, party. Um, uh, Castellon Bear are making mistakes. Uh, I think they were playing the ball out there and they made a mistake. Douglas pounced a good move and a great, a great finish by, uh, by Young Farrell. Very, very good score. Very good score indeed. The kick out of Reach in the midfield. Oh, it's caught by Seamus Harrington, but it falls from him. And uh, running onto it there, right out from the corner. That man, Ronan Geary, I think it is. A uh, bit of dirt on the jersey and have to see from this player. And it comes as far as Conor McCarthy. Conor McCarthy. And uh, he plays it across the field. And it comes to the man who got a point a while ago, Johnny Fabler, playing with confidence and style. And he lays it back to Brian McCarthy. He's number four on his back. And uh, can he get it inside? I wonder. Seamus Spencer has gone back to help out. And uh, so too is Noel Murphy. And the free will be quickly taken. Is it too quickly? It comes as far as Wiseman. And Wiseman leaves the ball behind him. And uh, this side of the field, Spencer trying to get on the, the end of it, but the man that does get on it is Noel Murphy. And Noel Murphy delivers it low on the ground to Spencer, and Spencer is absolutely panting to the high heavens trying to get this one. He does win it. Can he get inside, though? And Spencer solas into the 20 metre line. I think he's going to have a cut off this one, and he drizzles straight across the field, and that certainly is very disappointing for him because it'll be cleared out by Donald O'Callaghan from Douglas. Donald O'Callaghan and Donald, a lovely ball right up into that corner again, and playing so well up there. Good play by Douglas as they come out and they win it and they fetch everything. And a great play by Geary inside. In towards Geary, in towards the full forward line. But Sean Bond is equal to the challenge this time. Out in front of David Lachan and drilled out the far side of the field. Seamus Harrington lays low Geary and uh, the ball runs on. But Don't do do Lo Callahan gets it. Doc O'Callaghan, as he's affectionately known, tries to get this one in. Does get it in and Douglas are attacking again. Good play by them. And Johnny Fall has it wearing number 15. He's heading for the gate at the far side. But he's a good right foot or left foot, whatever way you want it. The left foot is asked to do the business. And Davy O'Driscoll gathers it from under the crossbar. Davy O'Driscoll is the Castone Bear goalkeeper. He clears it out the far side of the field. And Castone Bear badly in need of a couple of scores. We're talking about eight points to one that they're Douglas Minner leading. Are they on their way to what it would be a historic force for them in the summer? And there's a scrap going on the far side. And uh, the scrap is between. We'll tell you a little bit more about Leather. We'll follow the plates with Alan O'Regan. He's very far out from Goldo. And Alan O'Regan wins at 30 metres out. And then he gives it inside to Wiseman. Wiseman is drilling his way in and then he kicks it. A very, very difficult angle, but it goes off for a wide ball. And Wiseman puts his hand to the head. There are two subs coming on for the Castone Bearmen. And certainly Oli ringing the changes, left, right and centre. Uh, Sean Regan, I think, is a player that's coming on. And uh, Sean Regan, and I think it's into Wiseman and Sean O'Regan are the players that are coming in. It's the last throw of the dice now by Ali Shuley as he tries to do something about this state of affairs. And certainly, Jim, it is a difficult situation to see for the Castor Bear min, min, to be in 16 minutes into the game and they're trailing by all of seven points. I think so, Paddy. I think it's a great team performance by uh, by Douglas. They're picking up all the breaks in the half back line and uh, uh, they're bursting out with the ball. Their forwards are running very well off the ball, taking the ball and running in for another. They look much hungrier now at the moment than Castellon Bear. Castellon Bear will need to push hard and they'll probably need a goal. At the moment now, they've made a change. They put uh, Noel Hagton back full back on uh, David Lacken to try and stop the tide in there. Try to save the tide, and uh, we are 17 minutes gone into it. And uh, it's the Douglas Mendo leading by seven points and a score of eight points to one. You're with 103 FM right across the county in association with the hole in the wall bar. And uh, Spencer running into a little de difficulty and running out of petroleum or diesel or whatever. He's burning and he's burning a lot of it this weather. But it comes to the full forward from Douglas. Well, the man wearing the full forward's jersey, Owen Coveney, he could wear it and play it out. Such a stylish player. He throws it out to the barber, the hairdresser, and he goes down and top it. And in difficult situations, he gives it to Don. Don't look, Alan. Don't look, Alan gives it inside to Johnny Fall, and Johnny Fall is giving it with the left foot, and Johnny Fall left foot. Oh, an unbelievable miss! That one should have gone over the bar, and uh, certainly 
the Douglas men are very, very accomplished footballers, and even though a lot of them are very young, they're playing uh, with the attitude of men much, much older indeed, as they come attacking the Castor Bearmen have gone back there trying to work it out. And certainly the ball gone in out of our vision there, but it's gone. The Castor Bearmen have it, and they need to get more and more into it. And uh, this winner kick out here to the push in the back by O'Regan, but the full back, oh, he's so strong, Carl McCahill. And uh, Carl McCahill and O'Regan stuck in each other there. And Cahill doesn't mind how he gets it out, but he doesn't because it comes to Sean Dean. And Sean Dean gives a lovely pass. Oh, good play indeed by the Castor Bearmen. It's with... Uh, A.D. O'Sullivan and A.D. O'Sullivan gives it inside to Spencer. Spencer is trying his half out, and certainly he gives a lovely pass inside. It's to the number 20, and the ball is in the back of the net. A goal for Castledown Bear, and the man that got it was the sub, Sean O'Regan. I know whether he's or R, B or C, but Sean O'Regan sending that into the back of the net. It's now 1-1 to 8 points, and the sub coming out for Douglas. And the man that's coming out for Douglas, I think, is Paddy Barry. I would think is the player that they're bringing in. Paddy Barry coming in there, and... Uh, it's no or never for the Castor Bearmen, but certainly that goal came out of nothing, Jim. Well, I suppose not out of nothing. Great work by Spencer, uh, but it went in rather easily in the end. It, did, it was a good move. Like Castor Bear needed that score badly, I think. Uh, it was um, it was a, a good move. Spencer came in for the left hand side. I think everyone uh, thought that Spencer was going to shoot himself, but uh, Spencer himself should play the ball across to Sean O'Regan, and he finished. I think that the goal looked as if it was going to go wide, but um, into the corner. So a very good goal for Castor Bear. Came out nothing, like I said, but it's probably rise to know, and uh, they're in this game now with a great chance again. Four points between the sides, and on a fern, uh, Spencer is having a one with the left three again. And uh, yes, and um, Jas sticks out the left ear to pick up the the full tones of Seamus's voice there, and number 11 is going to the book. And uh, Graham Swanton is over there as well, and Graham says, you may as well take my uh, identification as well. And now the all midfield has a bit of a, I won't say Shamas Link, and Rona McCarthy uh, decides that he will dump into Wiseman out of the way because Wiseman is kicking to him like um, i was going to say like something to a blanket but let me tell you the kicker will be coming any moment now and teddy o'donovan will come to it and uh, maybe he thought that one was going wide i thought it was myself teddy but the kick out is coming from teddy o'donovan running onto it cast on bear now or pouring forward again but doc Callahan is back and great play by doc Callahan. he does it on the ground and low on the ground but it goes out over the in the sideline and it's a wi uh, line ball over there back on the cast on bear 45 meter line one one to cast on bear Eight points to Douglas. And we're 20 minutes into the second half. How far is Tony O to be mighty contest now? But Douglas, in fairness, are going back there and walking it and pouring their way out. And Brian McCarthy finding touch very close to the line and a slap coming in there. But the referee said there was no slap, that that's okay. Play on. And another line ball to cast down Bear. This line ball is taken. They're 65 metres off on goal and is drilled long by Wiseman. And underneath it is Dean. Dean collects and collects well. He's 45 metres out. He drills a lovely ball. And O'Regan is running out of it. But Teddy O'Donovan will collect. And Teddy O'Donovan lets it go to the top of his fingers and then drives it out. He's the goalkeeper from Douglas. And he finds good play by him. And uh, the ball breaks as far as Owen Coveney. And Owen Coveney will leave it on to the men wearing number 15, John Fowler. And John Fowler, that was fouled. And the referee says no to play on. Seamus Harrington gone back into full back. And Seamus Harrington is pouring his way out of defence. He's so strong when he comes out with it. And he's fouled out of all midfield. They're the free to cast it down there. They're four points behind at one stage in this game. It was a case of say it goodbye. But the goal by Sean Regan, the substitute, brought him back into it. And Ollie O'Sullivan stands again on the bridge today. On his own, he's the Minter Supreme. And O'Regan gathers in around the square. I said he'd get 1-1, he's got nothing yet. And O'Regan puts it onto the foot. And Teddy O'Donovan's underneath it. The ball hops over the bar and it's got over a score. Regan has got one of the 1-1. And certainly Castor Bear are back into it. And uh, did I meet the Douglas man before the game? He said, they're never ever beaten out in the country. And uh, will he live to eat and swallow his words? They're coming back into it. It's now one, two to five points, and it's three points between them. And the again, we'd like to say a special thank you to the Skibbereen Club and Charlie Cohan and all the lads down here. They've been so accommodating in making splendid arrangements for us all. And uh, this is the high standard has been set and maintained by a number of clubs all over County Cork for us this year as we come to the end of the uh, playing season in. Uh, 1996, whatever year we are on, 1997, some fella cut off a bit of power somewhere along the way, and uh, they kick out, and we'll follow the action here, is with Don Callahan and Don Callahan is really through, and uh, the Douglas Mendes is a foul there, right now, the referee says to play advantage, and uh, very close to the end line there, as uh, the Castell Bearman come attacking once again, and... Uh, 
Bollocks. Charlie. Some ground to pull there, I'd say, just go on there. We'll follow the action here. David McSweeney gets it, and David McSweeney, as he wins it over there on the far side of the field, and goes out over the sideline, and the scoreboard says uh, one, two to eight points, and uh, we've got uh, seven minutes left in this one. A most entertaining match, let me tell you. And uh, the ball gone out over the sideline in the far side of the field. But it's going to be a sideline ball to cast down there. They drill it and they drive it forward. And it's caught by that man, uh, Gary O'Sullivan. Gary O'Sullivan is fouled. He came on as a sub the last end of the free in. And certainly the pressure mounting on Douglas now. And this ball is driven inside. And from a way out the field, this one going off for a wide ball. And uh, Noel Harrington there uh, probably kicked better one than that. But certainly the pressure piling on Douglas now, Jim. Yeah, the, 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 the wheel has turned now. And uh, the goal has brought life into cast down there. They're coming... Uh, at, um, Douglas now from every angle. Douglas have had a few chances, but their their composure seems to be gone a small. But they need to gather that again if they hope to, to to hold this match because there's still six or seven minutes to go. Plenty of time for Castellon Bear to get back an equaliser. Exactly six minutes left in it. There won't be that much injury time. I don't think there was any injury at all today. The kick out is coming. Teddy O'Donovan and uh, certainly Douglas now are under the mantle of the pressure. One, two, two, eight points. Douglas are in the lead and. Uh, we're coming back in here, and uh, just to tell you that the free into Douglas or the free into Castor Bear, there's a Castor Bearman laid out in the field, and Ali O'Sullivan is on his way out. Yes, Avril, no, can you just wind the tape back from where we got cut off, right? That's all right, don't worry, it's the way so And they're running repairs out there, and Matty Butcher has been, uh, has recovered, and uh, there will be a free end to cast it down there. Niall Murphy is the man that's standing over this one, out in the middle of the park he stands. And Niall Murphy dropping this one in. Dangerous looking one indeed as it hits in around the square. There's a fist going up to it. And David McSweeney, how appropriate that he should get it. A man who's played superb football back in the wing, back corner, back position. Gives it out to Johnny Grimes. Johnny Grimes gives it up the far side of the field. And there a little bit of a push on the back as Ronan Geary runs onto it. Ronan Geary as he heads towards goal. Can he get it onto that polished left foot, I wonder? And Ronan Geary taps it and Ronan Geary sends it over the bar. A good point indeed by Ronan Geary. A great play by David McSweeney. He found Johnny Grimes and Johnny Grimes played it up the wing. Ronan Geary stayed inside his man and a great score indeed. And that score coming in the 25th minute and that was badly needed, Jim, from a Douglas point of view. Well, I think so. I think it, it, it a very well executed score. I think uh, Ronan Geary came out with his man and um, the two Castellan Bear players went for the ball. It broke over them and he broke onto the ball. Ran brilliantly and finished very, very well. A vital point for Douglas. A vital point for Douglas, but Castletown Barry ain't finished yet, let me tell you, nine points to one, two. There are four points between them, and coming as Wiseman from a way out, he puts it onto the right foot, and to the massive point by Wiseman. Surely that would warm up the cockles of anybody's hat. Wiseman was the man that got it. Don't know Wiseman coming through there, and certainly probably the point of the day, if not the century, the way it curled in off the top of the board. I'll never forget it, one, three to nine points. There's three between them again. And Douglas on their way. 1935, as I told you, they lost the drum tariff in the intermediate football and Ballet College intermediate hurling. In 1962, they won the county junior football when they defeated Middleton 2 10 to 1 3. There was no intermediate then, so they went up senior. They joined the newly formed intermediate grade in 1965, regraded in 1968 to junior. 1975, they decided to pack in that crack and move up to intermediate again. They've been there ever since. Their best has been two semi finals to Castlehaven in 1979 and 1980 against Middleton, but David McSweeney is the man that wins it again for them there as the pressure went on, but it comes to Marty Butcher and certainly now, it's now or never for Castor Bear they're coming attacking again, I think it's Dean and Dean gives it inside to O'Regan, O'Regan walking his way through and uh, trying to get it in, dangerous on the ground there where they picked up the ground and the ball is handled by the goalkeeper but he's allowed to do that or so they think and Brian McCarthy has it, but the ball is taken away from him. Dean has it. There are three points between the sides, and there are three minutes left. And Douglas Castlebear attacking. Lovely ball across the square. Who's going to go for it? But it's gone off wide. Dean stepped out over the wide. Dean stepped out over the in line there. And there's a there's a wide ball, and there'll be a kick out coming. There'll be a kick out coming in any moment now. And uh, the men standing over that, none other than the great goalkeeper. 
and uh, the great goalkeeper on the end is Teddy O'Donovan and there are three minutes left in it can Douglas hold out there are three points in front it's Douglas eight Cass Douglas nine I should say Castletown Bear one three the photographers are getting ready for what should be a ceremonial hour of minutes of greatness but Castletown Bear certainly are still involved in this one they're drilling in towards O'Regan this time he doesn't collect this time the ball is cleared out not very far though by that man Johnny the right half back Johnny Grimes Johnny Grimes gives up the far side of the field Castletown Bear Noel Niall Murphy he's been superb throughout this afternoon and he gives it to Noel Harrington the right corner back Noel hops it on the ground a dangerous thing to do to the skippery in surface on a day like today but the sprinter is trying to get on the end of it. He doesn't. The man that does those, Noel Murphy. Noel Murphy's foul. 45 metres out. He gives it inside. I don't know how Spencer got in there. And Spencer, as Joanne looks on, Spencer drills his way through. And he puts it onto the right foot. His right foot isn't great. And then he's blocked down. And they, they get it out there as Brian McCarthy. 28 minutes gone. Two left between Douglas and Glory and Ronan McCarthy and Glory. He's ploughing his way out through them, Ronan McCarthy is. And McCarthy is superb, he's fouled, he's held up and he'll take the free, but he's in no particular hurry, let me tell you, none, whatever. The officers, Matty Tooman is the chairman of Douglas, their secretary Sean Downey has been in the job for only 40 years, they're the ball coming in, is this one hailing over and going off for it, I was going to say a wide ball is kept in play up there, Castone Bear trying to keep it in play as much as Douglas, Larkin has it, and Larkin is drilling this one, but the referee had blown the whistle and there's going to be a free out of the Castletown Bear men down the far side of the field. Just to tell you, the chairman of the Douglas club is Matt Toomey, the secretary Sean Downey, the treasurer David Dwyer, the PRO, Morris Kelly, and of course John Dynan is the face of Douglas in the county board. But certainly if they were to go on and win this one, it would be one fabulous, fabulous victory. There is a minute left in it, or a half a minute if you want to be exact. And there are Douglas men out there absolutely panting and panicking and what have you. There's injury time. They never want to hear about injury time in Douglas ever, ever again. But today, ladies and gentlemen, may be an exception. Nine points to one three. Three Eden of Forna, three Colleen between Douglas and their great out of glory. Or can Castletown Bear come back? We'll never, never know. There's still a hold about there and you can hear the singing all over the pitch. And what can only be described as a fabulous, fabulous advert for all that's good in sport. The way the supporters are singing and I can see over there on the far side another great player, another great mentor and another, well I know whether he's a player but a great coach. None other than Eddie Murphy, the best dressed man in Douglas. And so too Paddy Harrington, they added to the occasion. The ball is drilled inside by Barry Finn. But coming out, Sean Vaughan O'Sullivan gets it there. And uh, Seamus Harrington, I should say, my apologies, Seamus. And he bring, we bring you the match in association with Seamus and court today. Noel Harrington has it. And Noel Harrington drilling it inside. And there's buzzing and they're pushing in there. But Dave McSweeney, I won't even contact anybody about man of the match because I'll make my mind up myself about this one. McSweeney is walking out. And he gives it to the man wearing number 20. And he drills it up the field. And uh, certainly Roland Geary, a great player indeed and having a polished performance and the ball going inside and Douglas driving forward again. It's with the own Coveney and own Coveney hits the deck, small to the ground, reminds me of Peter Whitney long go from County Down and soling into the corner and soling a little bit too far, gave that one away rather casually. The clock says 31 minutes. Will Jas ever blow it? I wonder. David Larkin has it. And David Larkin, the whistles are blowing all over the pitch. The scoreboard says nine points to Douglas. One three to Castletown Bear. Jas looks at the watch. Is it for the last time, I wonder, in the county in the media championship? It is, ladies and gentlemen. It's the last time you'll hear it. They're gone berserk over on the far side of the field. And certainly, certainly a great day for Douglas. And I suppose, Jim, worthy winners. Oh, I think so. I think... Um only if the goal of Castown Bear got there, um, uh, Douglas are well in top. But in fairness to Douglas, they, they reorganised themselves again after the, after the goal and the quick point by Alan O'Regan. And uh, I think overall, Douglas are worthy winners. They played great football all on the field. They talked about Douglas being a, a one. Yeah, <laughs> huh? them into the field, that probably thinks it's out then. Why are we saying it from being announced in the presentation? I'm just making out the presentation down here. Parties as well as in there. Parties as in there. Parties. 
I can't put up chair, will I? Yeah, yeah. You don't know? Look up, look up, look up, Son Christa Kunde Korki is Kush Vorahish to Dosa Van Shanov, August Bavalam of Kogart, the Gasago Eilish and Iron, a Sokton on Kleh Untuka Hogador region of Kogartigas Fele, let come in a Douglas A Sokton on Vok Vierka, Don Kedor, Don Don Limon, Billy Langkops, we won't give it to him a while. It gives me great pleasure indeed on behalf of the County Board to be here today for this wonderful occasion and, and this very historic occasion. It <laughs> this is the first occasion on which Douglas have taken the Billy Long Trophy home to Douglas and congratulations to them. It's the most important occasion for Douglas. They have been striving for years and years to win a trophy at this level. And it can't but do good for, for the games in the Douglas area that this trophy should be, should be bring, going home to Douglas tonight. Over, over the years, tremendous work has been done at underage level in particular in Douglas. And this is a most important victory for you here today. It's, a, a, it's also a very nos nostalgic occasion for myself because my late father was chairman of Douglas way back in the 1940s. I would like to congratulate as well today Castletown Bear for the wonderful performance that they put up. And in view of the tremendous year that they have had in Beira, with winning uh, two county championships already, I'm sure they don't begrudge Douglas this victory in the slightest. I want to congratulate the referee, Jess Cummins, on what I thought was an absolutely outstanding performance of refereeing out there today. And also, the O'Donovan Rasset Club for wonderful arrangements on two, two different days. Their, their arrangements were first class, and congratulations to them. And just before I wind up, I just want to send a special word of congratulations today to our all our good friend Brendan Larkin, who is in hospital. And Brendan has been waiting on this result for a long number of years. And I'm sure... And finally, I don't generally like to mention individuals' names on a performance out on a field, but I think the performance today of David McSweeney... Uh, Because this was this was some per, this was a performance of a lifetime by any man, and I congratulate David on an outstanding performance out there. And finally, and finally, now it gives me great pleasure indeed to ask Kev, Kevin Murray of the Trustee Savings Bank to join with me come over here to join with me in presenting this trophy to Don Luck Allen, a very worthy captain of the Douglas Skulls. Hold on, 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 hold on
Um, first of all, I have waited a long time. Now, I know people have said to me, just coming in from the middle of the pitch, this is the best day of their lives. This is definitely one of the best days of my life. And I'd like to say this to Anna Sorum and Colin Shaw Glocker, Essen Farn and Douglas Come on, boys! This is going to be a speech of thanks, because I tell you, there are millions of people, I'm looking out of heads there, there are hundreds of heads that I love to personally thank and I get around to you tonight in the pub, I guarantee you. I might be slurring my words, but you'll probably understand what I mean by the hugs and kisses, all right? First of all, I'd like to thank Castletown Mayor for a great game. Three cheers to Castletown Mayor. Hip, hip! Hip, hip! Hip, hip! I would a wish to treble for any team. No more than them, like I definitely would, but the fact that they were playing us today, I was praying all last night that they would lose. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'd like to thank all my players, all my players, because I feel a part of them. They are a part of this team. Every single one of them, bar none, was outstanding from January to nearly tomorrow, which is the start of December. Yes. Yes, <laughs> I'd like to thank the club and all the support and the team supporters team that they have out here today, everyone. I'd like to thank five men involved with us, what to be called generally, coaches, selectors, etc. Martin Kelleher, Finney Barr, Mick Regan, Norman Lawton, and one man who suffered through it last year when we lost the first round, but we did it all the way this year, Peter Fagan. <laughs> Peter mentioned sacrifices. We've made a lot of sacrifices this year. A lot of people here, you sacrifice the trip and our trip to come down here. I hope you enjoy the game. Yes. I'd like to thank my family and my girlfriend for putting up with me for the year yes. and for putting up with me for the last 24 years. Yes. I'd like to thank, I'd like to thank everybody, other, every other player's family and girlfriends for putting up with them for the last odd number of years. Yes. I'd like to put in one special thanks, and this is to, a Douglas family. They have a player on the pitch. They have a mother making sandwiches. They have supporters on the sideline. The Grimeses. <laughs> and last of all, since sponsorship came into the GA, I'd like to thank a crowd that has sponsored us through Tick and Tin. I'm delighted they're getting their money's worth today. Christie's Carpets. And again, last of all, to every Douglas man who ever lived, to every Douglas man who ever wore a jersey, yes. this was for you. Yes. Thanks very much. Yes. Good on to that door, boy. Good on me, Lamar, good on Thanks very much. Team four, Gavin. Bring it up. Bring it up. No, team four, Johnny. Come on, happy team four, Gavin. No, no, no. All right. Hey, look at that. Take it, no. You're not taking photograph, no? Oh, I wouldn't be so. Talk to me Fucking beautiful. Fucking beautiful. That was the best. Hi, Molly. Where's Teddy? Denshaw. Johnny Downey. Um, joined by 
They're all very important, Douglas Mint today. First man I went to work with is uh, Norman Lawton. Uh, somebody told me he played uh, under 21 football with Douglas, uh, with Dublin at one stage. He's team manager, though, of Douglas this season. And certainly this must be such a joyous occasion for you, Norman. Well, all I can say is it doesn't get much better than this. I, th I really felt that for great areas of today's game that we were completely and utterly on top. Uh, when we ran eight points to one up, I said, well, I don't think even Castletown Bear are going to pull it back from us today. And I'm glad to say that wasn't the case. We certainly went all the way and we deserve what we got today. One thing I noticed, Norman, about the side is the amount of positive thoughts. I know you have a lot to do with that, but uh, even though when he left here the last day, a lot of people saying that, you know, that she could have uh, left it behind. Just positive thinking all the way. Certainly, because as far as we were concerned, we were still in the championship. Most important thing, we hadn't lost any game. And effectively, uh, we knew that with a little bit of fine-tuning here and a little bit of fine-tuning there, the game was ours. Thank you, Norman. And I'm now joined by uh, the cool bar of the side, none other than... Uh, Obviously, a great goalkeeper and a great character as well, oh, Teddy O'Donovan. A great day, Teddy. Great day, Alex. Oh, this is uh, obviously the best thing I've ever come across in my life. Better than Ireland, Ireland's better than counties, better than Noah. This is brilliant. No, brilliant. You, you can tell me no, no one else will hear this, but when that ball slipped into the back of the net, give me, give me a few of your thoughts. A few of my thoughts, I had to meet, make the people of Castle Lumbier a small bit happy. Small bit happy. They two counties, three no tough luck, lads, I'm sorry, but we, did, we needed this one badly for the young players. All the young players you can see around here. Teddy Donovan, thank you very much indeed. I must say, when I was doing a bit of research for this game, and I don't do too much of it at times, uh, I came across a, a statistic that uh, the club secretary was a man called Sean Downey and that he has been in the job. You, you 38 years, 38 only. This is the best one yet. <laughs> and I suppose, Sean, it would only be fair to remember that there were some lean years as well. Very much so, very much so, Paddy. We stuck by it through taking tin, but it worked it all today, definitely. It's, an, it's a victory that obviously will do so much for the older people, but considering the great underage structure that they have, it is even more important. Well, the underage are, are, are terrific this year. They've won 13 trophies in the Garda this year. And this is the icing in the cake for us now, no doubt about it. Sean Downey, the club secretary of 30 years, we say thank you very much. Yeah! Superb the last day, and likewise today, uh, Barry DC, the centre-back, certainly a great day to be Douglas footballer, Barry. I don't know what to say, I mean, it is unbelievable, I mean, the last time I played was 1994 against Castle Marto, when we won, and we kind of, this is my first year back after, well, whatever, two years, and I mean, I've yet... A small known fact is Trevor Lyons, our sub keepers out that I'd yet to be beaten in that old championship with Douglas and so something that I didn't want getting out because you know when you start letting things like talk about things like that, they come back to haunt you. But I mean I'm still unbeaten and I don't know, it's just incredible and, I mean it, it's for the fellas like that have been playing for the Don Callahan's, the Ronan McCarthy's who've trained hard fellas like Don and Mead and <laughs> who's <laughs> wants me to mention his name there, but you, you can do that. Like, I mean, Donald has been a, again a fella who's missed out this year through circumstances that he couldn't help. And I mean, if uh, Donald has been there for donkey's years, and, and Teddy Donovan and, and Peter Fagan, and uh, there's just so many people like thanking my mum, like Doc is thanking girlfriends. I don't have a girlfriend, but I'll thank my mum. Well, if you can't get a girlfriend after this, you're, you're in a sad state. But um, that's, just, that's just great, and I feel sorry for the Castledown Bear lads because. I mean, they've had a good year, and it's no consolation to them. They went through the three, but I mean, <laughs> Seamus Spencer getting one too, and I was, I was happy from the last day, and I wished him the best of luck, and he wished me the best of luck, and you know, it was a good hard game, and there was no dirt involved. And we'll, we'll have right. to leave you back into the photograph. Come on.
I've eventually caught up with some of the most colourful uh, dress men in Douglas, and uh, one of them, Eddie Murphy. And Eddie, I presume that anybody that knows anything about underage football, first of all, in Douglas, will know that you have a lot to do with this dream. Oh, well, it certainly was a dream. It's been a long time waiting. This dream was even before I ever was born. But uh, underage has been so strong the last number of years. This is something that we have certainly looked forward to in the last number of years. And I tell you, Paddy, it's a great feeling. It's absolutely marvellous. And most importantly, it's going to be great for the kids because the kids have something to aim for now. We're senior and we're going to be there for a long time. One, just, just, just one question, Eddie. How does it feel like to be wearing such ridiculous clothes? I'd say you want to run that by me now again, party because I don't understand your Irish. <laughs> <laughs> so we say uh, well done to uh, Eddie Murphy, another great supporter of a great club. <laughs> After catching up with uh, two more uh, very, very happy Douglas men, uh, first of all, coming to uh, Man of the Match, and there was never any doubt about it, and I must say it was the most unique achievement that the county board chairman mentioned it because uh, county board chairman don't uh, mention things like that, but David McSweeney, cornerback, the last day and today, you were just superb. Your thoughts on, uh, on, on what was a great personal performance? Yeah, I think it was a personal uh, It was a team effort, really. Right? <laughs> <laughs> take, take the credit when you get a chance, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> I look for this man there for inspiration. Like he's, he's in a cock team. And, like, I, I, I'm proud to play with him. Like, that's all. <laughs> uh, Ronan McCarthy. Um, Always, I was saying, any dealings I had doing commentaries for Cork and all that, a total and utter gentleman. And uh, today it was uh, just a ward runner, but it was a fabulous team performance as well. Yeah, absolutely fabulous team performance. I think we've been criticised through the campaign that we were one or two or three individuals. Have a look at that today. There's your answer. Eight or nine fellas all over the field. Everybody, everybody gave it their all, and thank God we've won it. <laughs> there, was, there, was, there, was one, there was one Douglas man uh, that I met in the way in, and... Uh, you can tell me this now, Mick is over there listening as well. Uh, how you how you ended up since the forward at the start? Yeah, we just we just say we tried out <laughs> and see how we get on with it, you know. But uh, it didn't work out as it turned out. But you know, you, you try those things. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. Um, I mean, all I'd like to say is that over the years, um, I've seen this to other people there. Over the years, just the last 20 years, we've been beaten in first and second rounds. We've had great players in the clubs over the years: John Hargan, Mick Regan, you know, Derek Regan, like, go on forever, Pat Welch, loads of them. They didn't have the honour of winning a county with better teams in Douglas. And at last we've ended a famine because 35 years is a famine. Ronan McCarthy, thank you very much indeed. <laughs> there are some Douglas people that I am uh, personally more aware of. Uh, one of them is uh, Paddy Harrington because of his, his work in the underage. Paddy, as a person uh, like Eddie Murphy a while ago, uh, this, must, this victory must mean an awful lot to fellas like you. Of course, it was a marvellous victory. It was for all the young lads who were coming up, and we have some marvellous, marvellous, talented young boys coming up. And as we'll, be, we'll be senior, and all these boys have something to look forward to now, and I, sh I think that's what it's all about. When the goal slipped in, midway through the second half. Yes, I, I uh, looked at Ali Tobin, and Ali Tobin said we were going to come again. And after playing behind, or, uh, Ali Tobin played behind me as a cornerback years ago when we were both young. And I actually believed Ali. And it, it came true. We got that final point that counted. And the cup was ours. Thanks, Paddy. Thanks very much. Yeah! Yeah, slowly but surely, we're slowly but surely catching up with various Douglas people around the place. And I'm now joined by the chairman of the under eight section, uh, Ali Tobin. And again, Ali, as we said to the other lads there, uh, it's, I suppose, for young men like these that this victory will even do more for. Oh, it was the most important victory for us today. Um, it was actually vital because, as you can see, all the young lads around here, uh, this, is, this is their future. Um, we have a very good structure in our uh, club at the moment, uh, which we've had with the past few years. Um, it's certainly coming to fruition now, and we're absolutely thrilled and over the moon with it. Thank you, Oliver. Cheers. I mean, look, just look at it, Dan, you'll get that there. <laughs> no. I'm joined by Martin Kelleher, and um, many people might know this, but... Uh, I think it was after the uh, semi-final match against uh, Valley Rovers when I tried to get an interview with him. He told me that he'd only talk to me when they'd win the county championship. And uh, I don't know whether you thought that would ever happen after, but certainly it has now. Yeah, and it's, uh, it was a great performance today. It's been a long year. At the start of the year, we all thought that we would win it. Um, that we were good enough, that we had a panel that was good enough to win this county. 
and uh, thanks be to God, it's come true. Uh, one thing that was very noticeable about it, I mean, after coming out here the last day with Cassiopeia getting the two late points, and for a team like that had never played in a county final, that, uh, you know, a lot of people thought that they had missed their chance and that, you know, Cassiopeia's experience would tell out. But one thing I was impressed by was the positive attitude of this side. Yes, this is a very young side. Um, after the last day, we were very disappointed that the game finished up in a draw. But that only lasted for two or three minutes in the dressing room afterwards. Then we all put our heads back up and say, OK, we're only half as through the game. And we did another match on, on another day. Um, this is a very young team. Um, to be honest, a lot of them don't know how to lose yet, especially in intermediate grade, because um, there's only about seven of the team from last year's panel playing. And these fellas, they've got great heart, great determination. They're a very young side, and I'm sure when they go up senior, that they will be a very testing team up there, and they will challenge other teams. And I presume that you'll make your comeback next year now when they go up senior. Oh, of course, but, but my team come back now, of course. So we say to Martin Keller, very well done, and a great day as well. <laughs> Joined by uh, Peter Fagan, Westmead men, I do believe, but now operating down here in Cork, and uh, certainly it must be a dream of major proportions for a team coach to win the, end up winning a county playing such attractive football. Um, yeah, I'm delighted for the lads. They've, um, they've put a lot of work into this. When I met them last December, January, we spoke about what was required to win a championship. None of them have done it before. And you feel you're speaking to into a distance because nobody can realise what's important. Um, we worked hard all year, everybody. The full panel, the selectors, the people on the periphery. And I'm just delighted that for, for a club like Dotis, that they can see that with the hard work, that they can get results. And if they can build from that, who knows? Like, they should be well capable of holding their head high in senior. And maybe in a year or two, we might be talking about winning the senior championship. Peter, leaving here the last day, was it hard to get the, the spirits up again? It's, it's always difficult. We had the game won, we threw the game away. Um, we went on then and we psyched ourselves up and then we, we lost our way a bit in the league final again in similar circumstances. So everybody was saying that this tight team hadn't got the ability, hadn't got the character. Well, I've known from the start that they had the ability and I kept telling them that and eventually, as you can see today, they believed in themselves and no disrespect to Castletown Bear. The score was eight points to one. We had a goal, a golden goal chance. We didn't take it, and if that had been taken at that stage, we would have ran out very, very comfortable winners. As it was, fair play to Castlemaine. They never said no. They came back. They got a great goal, and they made a, a very, very close finish. It. Peter, thank you very much indeed. Okay. Joined now by uh, a great full back, uh, Cormac Cahill. First of all, Cormac. Uh, it was a difficult task, Marky, a person like Alan O'Regan. He got one point a day, uh, he got two balls the last day. Certainly a testament of, of uh, I must say, a great full-back play. He's an excellent player when he gets the ball. The key with Alan O'Regan is to try and stop and get it. If he gets it, he's half impossible to stop, and he can kick points from all sorts of angles. But, uh, like I said, he's not a fellow, I don't know, it wasn't a physical contest. I didn't read between us. It was, he's a very nice bloke, actually. We kind of had the odd few words out on the pitch. But, uh, like I said, it's just a matter of getting out and trying to stop the man, get the ball. Tell, tell us what you're talking about. I just, you know, just that and the other way around about the standard of football, actually. Today, you know, the pitch, we had a few comments on that and whatever. Like, and like I said, he's a nice old bloke, so we chatted away and there was no sort of dirty play or whatever out of it. But uh, it made it for an enjoyable contest. But, like I said, you can never relax with the man. He learned that the last day. Uh, there was only a few minutes to go. And all of a sudden, I thought we had the thing in the bag, and maybe I just lacked concentration for a split second. Next thing, bang, the ball was over in the bar and it was equalised. So this time, I was complete concentration for 60 minutes, which didn't make it. You know, you couldn't relax and whatever, and all tension and the stomach was turning at times, but at the same time, it was great to have the result at the end of the day. Conor Cahill, thank you very much indeed. Yeah. Joined by wing forward, Conor McCarthy, uh, brother of uh, a more illustrious player, shall we say, but uh, a great day, Conor, to be a Douglas player, and uh, you played a major partner as well. Fabulous day, it's a fabulous day for everybody. You know, um, everybody put the effort in, and luckily something came out of it. You know, it's been 11 months, it's been a long year, and it's great to have a medal in your hand, a cup in your hand, a county medal. You know, no, what Douglas, welcome to see your football. You know, right? Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, coming out after half time, I felt that. Uh, the, the three scores that he got immediately after the halftime were the real killer blows from a Castonbia point of view. I'd, I'd imagine they were, but when they got the goal, they said to ourselves, "Oh my God, you know, not again." Um, and these conditions, anything can happen. Pitch is very soft, slip, anybody could slip, anybody could get through. Um, but I thought we held our heads very well, we're a very young side and we held our heads very well. And 
that's the way it goes. And a, and a, and a proud day for the, the McCarthy household. Oh, absolutely. Two county medals on the house and Modern Farmer will be absolutely delighted, you know. Um, that, that is not often that happens, you know. Colin McCarthy, thank you very much indeed. One of the new kids on the block, I suppose, uh, John Fall, corner forward supreme. Uh, a great game today, John, and uh, it's only now I realise how young you are. It must be a marvellous feeling. Unbelievable. It's my first year playing to me as well. So seven championship matches, and so for those in the team, I've played for ten years, and they've only won our ten championship matches. Like so, it's a brilliant feeling. Uh, coming down here, I mean, you're literally coming down into the lines there when you come down into West Cork for any football match. Oh, yeah. But but you played with amazing confidence. I know if you're playing them after because we should have beat them the last day. And he, and he made up your mind that he was definitely going to do it. Today. Oh yeah, definitely. Celebrations planned? Oh god, gotcha. yeah. John Falk, star corner forward, thanks very much. Another one of the uh, star forwards in the game, and um, first of all, Owen, I must go back to the first day. I thought you were absolutely awesome that day inside the full forward. Yes, I was happy enough with the performance that day, but didn't get enough of ball and lost out for a couple of challenges, so we were, we were, we were showing the video after that game and a bit disappointed with the performance after that. I hope you, I hope you weren't disappointed with the performance of the video, but anyway, this is a, a one that you'll never ever forget, I presume. Not, not a chance. This is what I've been waiting for. 19 years of age, second year on the team, and we've got a county medal in my back pocket. What more can I ask for? Uh, Talking about that, like it's, there's quite a number of young players on the side, but uh, I was amazed with the way he threw the ball around the place. He played with confidence of a much older side. Well, look, we've been at it since the beginning of January now. About 10, 11 months, three nights a week. You, you have to be good after that. If you're not, you shouldn't be playing. So, uh, we, the young side and hopefully develop from this now. Oh, and thank you very much indeed. Now joined by uh, David Larkin, uh, operated full forward today and certainly played an absolute blinder in there, but uh, first of all, we must get uh, certain things out of the way. Must be a great day for Brendan Larkin. Absolutely tremendous altogether. Um, I was just on the phone to him, actually, he phoned him in the mobile. It took me a long while to get through, but the man is elated. He's an absolute elated up in the, up in the hospital. Uh, as people probably know, he went only went in Friday evening to have an operation. Um, unfortunately, he couldn't be with us today, but he's absolutely over the moon. And Chalk it down to be our first stop on the way home this evening. Uh, to come to the match itself, um, a lot of wides in the first half, but um, after half time, three great scores, which I think made all the difference. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people going on all year about our, us as a uh, forward line not, not working well and, and not, not coming to grips with things, but I think the supply of the ball in today was absolutely magnificent for, for me personally, and I think it's a full forward role where I feel a little bit more at home. Um, we got the right ball in today, and thanks for the God, things worked out for us. Um, Castle Dunbar were inclined to probably give away a couple of frees, and uh, I think these things worked. We punished them when we got the frees. And, for, for uh, the older guys like yourself, right? The older guys compared to some of those 19 and 20 year olds, it must be something that you thought at times in your playing career that would never happen. Yeah, for me, for me personally, I mean, a lot of people wouldn't know that I never grew up in Douglas. I, I, I played football with Douglas, everyone knows the relationship or my connection with Douglas, but I never grew up in Douglas as Bishopstown or, or the bars or the club I, I probably should. What, what, what do you look at? <laughs> but a lot of people criticised me over the year that I never went to a senior club and I never played, but um, today makes it all worthwhile. Long, long while waiting for it, and thanks for the God today, it worked out. David Larkin, thank you very much indeed. <laughs> now, uh, Brian McCarthy, another member of that uh, grateful backline, it must be said, and uh, uh, when they talk about this match, they'll obviously have to remember the last day as well. It was, I must say, it was a powerful full backline. Yeah, it was very close, like we knew, like, your man Regan's quite good, so we just tried to hold him as best that we could, like, you know? But uh, we just did it on the day, like, you know, just held on. It's very tough, very tough last few minutes. Uh, tough, in the, tough in the last few minutes, but uh, I think in fairness, if we leave the goal off, you were uh, the much better side. Well, I think so on the day, like, you know, we knew we could do it, and it was just proving it really to everybody, you know? So it's great. Uh, one thing uh, you might be able to tell me, I'm failing so far. How did Douglas produce such a confident, confident, cocky bunch of young players? I don't know, it's just basically over the last couple of years, like we've a big panel, 30 players, not just the 15, and everybody put it in all year, and I just felt, you know, we're going to click sometime, and, this, this you know, there's no better time than, you know, county final, so. And all you want now is Nemo Rangers in the first round of the senior championship. Yeah, we wouldn't mind that at all. <laughs> <laughs> we say to Brian McCarthy, another great cornerback, thanks very much, Brian. Thank thanks. First of all, Barry, uh, Barry Finn, one of the midfielders today, I've got to apologise to you because I... Uh, mispronounced your name on a few occasions during the video but um, certainly 
uh, the last day totally, totally dominated midfield. The boys made a few changes today. Maybe took a while to adapt, but certainly adapted it and adapted in some great fashion. Yeah, it was it was tough going out there, but I thought I felt uh, ourselves we got started a lot faster in this game than we did in the last one. Uh, obviously, the last one was uh, a lot of the players. Uh, certainly, my first time uh, in a, in a county. It's been <laughs> I suppose there's been nobody played in uh, in '65 or definitely not in '32. But uh, um, yeah, we, we got started a lot faster this time. Maybe not around the uh, centre field. Uh, it, we were told like the way the strategy would go. The ball was going to be bypassing us a lot of the time, and uh, from the centre half up to the, the forwards, like it was, it was superb for the first half of the game. We got on top very fast, and that made my job certainly a lot easier. Uh, it was great, a pleasure to play with Conor McCarthy in midfield. Uh, he stepped in there instead of Ronan and filled his shoes very, very well. I felt like it was, it was a great game. I, I just thrilled to be in it. I still can't believe that we've won, you know. Barry Finn, thank you very much indeed. Now we're now joined by a man of many talents. But first of all, we speak about him as uh, a captain of a great Douglas side today, Don Callaghan. Thanks very much. It was, uh, I mean, I'm proud of every one of them, you know. We've worked very hard. We've worked hard for a long time. It hasn't been really just one year. We've had many disappointments in the last couple of years, losing the first round. As long as I've been playing, we've only really gone into the second round of, of, of championship. So this was a real bonus, like, and to be captain was just a dream come true, definitely, for me. Uh, as well as winning it, which is obviously the most important thing, the style in which he won it, the, the beautiful football he played must be an added bonus, shall we say. It was a big worry, obviously, I think, like, for us playing, you know, to have played championship all through the summer and then to have to suffer, say, conditions in the middle of winter, you know. That was our major worry. We thought we were blessed with the final the last day. We got such lovely conditions down in, here in Skibbereen. And again, today, I think, with the rain all week, everybody was wondering what was going to be, move pitch or whatever, but pitch was in a fabulous condition. The lads in the local club did brilliant. Um, and we felt like that it was a day for good football today. We always felt as a forward line that we weren't doing ourselves justice, but I think we played nice football. Both sides played good football. It was a nice, clean game, and I think the spectators seemed to enjoy it. Douglas did anyway. Yeah. Oh, you've got to tell, her, tell us about it. Right? It's the first time that a captain, in all my times going around to matches, I mentioned their girlfriend when they were accepting the <laughs> Well, it's just, you know, uh, there's a lot of people like have to put up with things and they all talk about players having to travel distances and go here and there but I mean when it comes down to the simple things like girls just have to put up with as much as, as mothers and fathers half the time because we get grumpy and we're nervous and we're irritated and so on and, but, uh, and they have to put up with us just talking about football and disappointed with losing games but it was definitely I think it was worth to mention any and all the other fellas girlfriends I had to mention too of course I couldn't just single my own out. Don't look Helen well done and thank you very much Thanks indeed. Joined now by uh, a man who has given service as a player and mentor or what have you, but uh, Mick O'Regan today. Great day to have been involved in Douglas in any capacity, but to be a selector and part of the management team that won the first county must be really special. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, there's been a lot said about the panel. We have obviously a core team, but there was 30 players trained. And when you saw them over the last few weeks, those 30 players worked so hard together. I mean, the guys went out today and they knew that if they weren't up to it, there was a fella standing on the line that could easily come in. A tremendous spirit going in the club. I mean, we were beaten in the league final two, week, two or three weeks ago. And you'd think that that would upset us. But it, it just gave us an extra little bit of impetus. We, we learned from that. I mean, we were the last day we were coasting and they came back and drew. And I think that experience that we learned from that will be worth so much to us in future years. You could even see today, when the, game, when the game went against us, we just settled down and got back on with it. Are we good enough to play uh, Nemo Rangers in the first round of the county championship next year? Well, we, we're certainly as good as, as any Douglas team that I've seen playing. And there's young lads there who are on the line who are coming through now. And we have a future that's unreal. With the, the spirit on the sideline and the young lads that were on the sideline today, watching this today, will be worth four or five years' time. We'll make a huge club out of this club. I think we, we really have a, a great future. Today was, was so long coming, though, but everything, anything that's good has to be worked hard for, and I think we worked hard for today. Regan, a man who's given great service to the Douglas Club, we say, uh, I got a meal of Thank you very much. Board delegate John Dynan, um, following Douglas through thick and thin, I suppose. But um, when we left the last day, you know, a lot of people were saying that Douglas probably had thrown it, and the, cast, the Castone Bear would uh, learn more. But if anything, it was a more polished performance today, John. 
but I think it was the way that the lads played out there today. They, they come in, they, they train fierce hard, even last, 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 last Sunday some, some, some morning, below on top, top of Camden, in all the rain. There, there was 30 of them tugged out and trained at half of them. And that was fierce com- commitment from, from any club, club team, I think. Any lads were, they were fabulous, like, you know. Uh, John, you've been going to the county board as a delegate of an intermediate team for a long, long time. Did you ever think you'd be taking your place among with, with the with, with, with the seniors, the senior delegates that were coming in? I did not indeed. I know that's me. I'm around over 20 years going to the county board, but that is me. That's me. That's me. I miss re, re, really great for to be in while the senior, senior ranks at long last, you know. And I think it's great for the, the, the Douglas, Douglas as well, you know, the village. I think it's fabulous, like, and the support that was here today from youth and everything else. And also, yeah, yeah, so they, they beat Nemo in, in, in the fun, on the 15 champ, championship, and I thought that was a great boost to the weekend. <laughs> so we say to John Dynan, very well done, and thanks very much, John. Thanks. Well, there we have it after what was a great game of Gaelic football. It went to a replay, but at the end of the hour, it's the men of Douglas who are crowned 1997 Cork County Intermediate Champions on a scoreline that will go down forever in history in Douglas. The final score once again here from Skibbereen. It was Douglas, nine points, Cassetown Bear, one three. I call you, I need you, my heart's on fire. You come to me, come to me wild and wild. You come to me.
we've got to say well done to Douglas. They 